Stop it, everybody. I'm trying to dole out more treasure here. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Delirium Engine. This is episode 7, and we are today greeted by Swampy. Hello. The Dagwood. And Ian the Barbarian. Eh. Eh. Who has lost his beard. <laughs> Not that you can see it, but just imagine the worst possible change possible, and that's what you got. <laughs> He's smiling right now, but it's a smile of, of knowledge. Defeat. I want to get you a fedora because you look like Uncle Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the fedora, rub the neck beard. We gotta get. Go. We gotta find somebody to white knight. It'll be Let's perfect. Get, some maple get a big and... white trench coat, my lady. Man, man. I'm here to save you. Y'all old men just jealous of my youth. That's I was going to say, my roommate has a uh, collected of col collectible sword collection. Ew. You could you could borrow some of those. No, I'm not bald, sorry. You have to be bald in order You have to be bald to collect swords. That's the rule. Okay. Oh. Well, I guess my buddy's fine. <laughs> I guess I don't collect. Welcome to the Delirium Engine. This is the rule for collecting swords. Yeah. Uh, that's you what have this to be bald. About. You have to be bald. Yeah. And thank you. Join us next week. <laughs> Thank you. Join us next week. All right, yeah, that's the rule. Fucking right. take it or leave it. Next done. week, uh, we're language. moving up from doxing to uh, swatting. Swatting. Yeah, we're gonna be swatted. Every single one of us. Yeah, but you're just that. gonna get shot because you got a shitload of imitation swords in your house. Nah, yeah, we all have hair. And I'm not even bald. Fantastic hair. True. Fact. Did I do the first swear? No, I did. Oh, okay. Then I dropped, already apologized. Dropped dude. An F. Nice. Yeah, I dropped it. Okay, now I'm free reign, baby. Yeah, you got free reign. Free reign, baby. So if people don't really already know it, which they probably do, because our seven subscribers currently seven, maybe eight. I didn't check. We might have the glorious eight. Ten, we get a party. Um, but our glorious seven subscribers should have already watched the other episodes, or not, because they usually just watch one and subscribe because they know us. We have a party. I'm throwing a plate. Oh, Sounds good. Can we all split like a microwave pizza or? <laughs> one one microwave pizza. It's ten subscribers. Yeah, one of those single. Yeah, a single ones. serving. Yeah, we're gonna, we're the, gonna with cut the it three all up. But don't don't put it in the oven. Slice. Just microwave it. Yeah, but yeah. only halfway, so it's still cold in the middle. Yeah. All right, and move the pepper <laughs> move the pepperoni to one side. Perfect. No, no, no. But it's not. We haven't even enough. gotten got the title yet. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> we've set the tone for the whole stream right now. It's awful. So <laughs> now that we've set the tone appropriately, let's get on to the serious business of uh, of the topic. So today's rule for successful GMs, which, like I said before, I wrote in university and have dusted off, and we are now discussing it, now for the seventh time. Although it says six, fantastic. That's, uh, that's some top-tier uh, top tier editing for it. Hey, let's see if we can just change that on the fly here. Oh, wow, look at that. Check this out. This is the magic of cinematography. Bush did 9-11. Pushed did 911. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Done. We got it. I actually blame the. Whoa! Look that at one. that. Oh, oh man. man. And I'll bet you everybody on screen saw it. Like, <laughs> oh, rule seven. We should like, check that. Like out Merlin later. the magician. When I totally watch this later, I'm gonna see that. Yeah, you're not gonna watch this later. <laughs> yeah, I'm lying to you. We don't I'm have a, to watch it. I'm we a big liar. It. Yeah, we lived it. It's true. That's true. We lived the Star Wars. I feel like I feel slightly grimy when I watch my own streams. <laughs> I'm sure. Like, is it like I've Patton, done it. Like I'm sure Patton everyone does. Pardon? It. It's like patting yourself on the back. Yeah, it's like, oh, this yeah, is a like, really good job. We getting did. my views up because I'm viewing it. Well, so, <laughs> <laughs> just to go back on topic, this is starting to look like a and d game. Yeah. Uh, rule number seven. Where's the the final rule for the rules for GM. So congratulations, everybody, for uh, for helping us get through this the first seven rules. Let's all give ourselves a pat on the back, a little clap. Let's rub our neck beards. Perfect, we got there. I even shaved, so it's nice and fresh. You yeah, five clocks double going down there, boy. Yeah, that's poo. That, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so the rule, as you have already seen for the last five minutes, is do not construct impossible walls. Do not construct escalators to victory. So this is a pretty straightforward rule. Basically, the idea is if your players want to do something, don't tell them no in such a way that they basically feel like they cannot get past this impenetrable wall. And more interestingly, and we'll get to that one second, do not construct escalators to victory. Do not give people free stuff constantly and just endless free wins. Because though it may be good at the beginning... The idea would be that it will ultimately destroy your game. So, 
let's uh, let's touch on the first one. Do not construct impossible walls, and we'll see what everybody has to say. So start with Swampy because he's here for the least amount of time. Um, when I think about impossible walls, I think about someone who doesn't want their setting or their super cool NPCs to die. So what they like to do is they like to give them character or plot armor, and it's um. I think the purpose of a D and D game is a series of challenges, and if a character wants to go around and be a jerk and slay the whole village and um, do something absolutely chaotic, stupid, well, that's well within that is within their means. Obviously, comes consequences. But when they do other things, like say they want to they want to assassinate the king, and it's the king of say a metropolis or, or an empire, it has to be. It has to be well thought out. The, cha the challenge has to be there. You have to you have to process as a DM the challenge itself, which is very very important. Like, no one's gonna walk into the castle and and crossbow bolt the king, free reign, not a problem. It it doesn't make any sense. The thing is is that you the idea is that challenge is part of the reward, and that to me is a beautiful thing. The idea of me going around being able to, um, like, say, in a video game where you're high level and you're going around, like, punching mud crabs, no problem, giggling to yourself. Like, that's fun for all five <laughs> minutes. But, <laughs> yeah, but, like, it's one of these it's one of these things where I want to, I want to feel like I have earned the reward. I have earned the renown. And the thing is that when a player expects a free win or a DM doles out a free win, it takes away from it takes away from that glory and the thing is, is that when i like to tell a D, &D story like all fellow mouth breathers like to do i want to tell it in a way where i am saying that this was the challenge it was impossible odds or you know what things were stacked against us and we need we needed to do our thing this was the amazing plan we came up with and that's the thing is as a dm i like to reward ingenuity and well thought out plans and not just i'm a big guy i'm gonna bash with the axe high dice roll to me, that doesn't make any sense. That's not. That's not to me. Role play. That's you. And if you get huffy over it, then to me, and people are going to get real mad at me for saying this. That's a bad player. I think the idea of someone getting upset because a they're they're not free to sandbox something. I guess I kind of. I guess I'm bridging into the escalator. You, you've you've been bridging into the escalator one for like <laughs> probably yeah. seventy percent of yeah. your rent. Well, I'm so highly far. caffeinated, and I like to go on tangents. Oh, so. Yes. The, the thing is about impossible walls, I guess, to digress, is if the char if a level one character, say, has been slighted by, slighted by a god, he wants to eventually sli like slay that god at level 20, gather a party and do so, like, that is that is one of those things where as, as a DM, I am gauging that as this is a, this is a epic level battle. This is something where you have to earn this chance in order in order to be in the arena versus this deity. Yeah, that and that that wouldn't be a wall though. That that's no that's a climb. But yeah, that's the thing though. Nothing should be a wall. Like if you wanted if you wanted to completely a barrier, I guess would be Yeah, if you wanted to find a way to um completely sinkhole the continent setting that I have, then like the idea that everything is smashable. Cultures are smashable, people are smashable, gods are smashable, uh like Anything can be smashable, depending on on how you want it. If it if it is, if it is constructed in your metaphysical world, I don't see why it shouldn't be broken. And the thing is, is that like once again, though, players have to earn that right. I don't think it should be impossible. Yeah. All right, Mister Dagwood, what do you say? Impassable barriers. Uh, I, I, largely, I largely agree that they're they're not a good idea because you do want people to overcome. Now, I will throw things that at players not based on something I want to protect in the story. Yeah. Uh, I don't... I, I like to be surprised about how things go go along. A, as a DM, I don't really have this whole big master plan and I want to see it come to fruition. I like to be surprised. I like to... Where the hell is this going? You know? Mm -hmm. um, but for the sake of any good story, there needs to be times when failure happens. And for sometimes sure. that means throwing some serious crap in their faces. Uh, stuff that they have no way of handling. But I don't hold on to it as a hard thing as far as impossible goes. Like, it would be apparently impossible, and I fully expect them to fail. Yeah. But if they come up with a good idea to get around that, yeah, okay, sure, sure, you made it through this time, by all means. Yeah. And that's, 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 like a, that's an awesome way to see it. And people having to reach a challenge, fail it, backtrack, and then build themselves up to it, 
that's part of that's part of the story. That's part of the reward. The war, reward and challenge is part of the story. Making it too easy or, or nigh impossible is, to me, just ruins ruins the the communal plot. I guess you could say. That said, the one part I do disagree with is that. Um, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hey, pup. Uh, at the fundamental level, if somebody has a really good idea that circumvents something, then by all means, yes. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things where, based on the flow of you know the tempo of the, the narrative and all that, uh, to say, yes, you rolled a nat 20, that doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Because the thing is, is that just because you rolled a natural 20, uh, say you're swinging a, a mundane broadsword against uh, some ridiculous like half deity and you're like okay do i slay it i'm like well no because it's 250 hp it's <laughs> it's a it's a it's a half god however you are the first person to lay a wound on it in several centuries and it will forever remember your name like you need to have those things where are right, it will and that's he'll name the stain on his boot yeah exactly after he crushes your head in but like that's the point is that um a critical success sometimes is not a tide changing uh, battle maneuver are an instant success. Sometimes it's survivability. I do love that when it does happen, but I don't think that... I think that sometimes there should be some cases where it doesn't matter what you roll. It's inevitability. You know, you yeah. can't climb that glass wall uh, without any gear just because you rolled a 20. Yeah. You, know? you go higher than any man has ever gone before Now somebody no turns gear. around and goes, hey, but uh, I happen to have these suction cups from mm. two sessions ago that will yeah, by all means. But uh, so so I largely agree. I don't believe in impossible walls, but I, I do think it's fair to throw impossible DCs from time to time in order to um, give that, that mm -hmm. feeling of a true story. Well, I think practicality is a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. All right, well, the Barbarian, what do you think? Um, well, most of the things I was going to say have been touched on already. Uh, one that wasn't, though, was... Um, while I don't, or while I do agree that you shouldn't construct the escalators or the walls to victory or impossibility, um, if your players happen upon them by mistake, like they keep digging themselves into a digger, like into a deeper ditch, then uh, yeah, things get harder, things get borderline impossible, and I mean, you just gotta work with that. <laughs> Natural consequence. Yeah, I mean, if you if you know that the door gets harder by, like, it strengthens itself every time you hit it and you keep hitting the door, well, you're shit out of luck. You did this to yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the door needs hugs. Yeah. Or you've murdered all the children in the village and you try to become mayor. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. I get what you're saying. It's like uh, the speed of light. You can approach it, but you can never reach yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that would be if you If you've done this to yourself, mm -hmm. then I'm, I'm just gonna run with it. <laughs> well, um... So I think we're all more or less in agreement. Like, I don't have to give my take on it, though I'll, I'll put some addendums here. I think what we're all sort of definitely in agreement with is, like, you know, you you have this PC group or one player, or it doesn't matter. All right? You, you basically say, ah, there's an impossible task in front of you. And the guy's like, okay. And then he somehow succeeds at the impossible task, despite your expectation of failure. And then... The bad move would obviously be immediately put a new impossible task right in front mm -hmm. of him so that he has to return home. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you've discounted anything that he's done yeah. because you didn't want him to go in that way in the, in the first place. So, it's like, for example, like, assassinate the king. There's an army in front of you. I get past the army. Okay, well, fireballs rain from the sky. How do you stop that? Well, I fucking get over the fireballs. F-bomb, excuse me. I was like, well, living wall is erected in front of you. And it's, it knows all of the ancient knowledge of the wizards. See, that's just a salty GM trying to play your kill. But, yeah. I so think, this is... I think the point is that... This is the part we're saying, like, these are... This that is no ruins good. the suspension of disbelief. Yeah. yeah. Or literal, you know... Literal invisible barrier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doom, doom, doom. Like, game, like those game walls in, in older games. <laughs> You're in a glass case of emotion is essentially what's happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I think in, in these situations, it's definitely a no-no. Well, yeah. I think of uh, almost like The Legend of Zelda where you have to, um, like, I think it was Ocarina of Time, and I'm, it's been a long time since I played that game, so people have to forgive me if uh, I kind of slight their, slight their fandom. That game's the greatest Zelda game of all time! Those people who say that are wrong. <laughs> 
I, I'm not saying what Wrong. you just said, but what I'm saying is, is that I like Twilight Princess. Uh, it was good. I like Link to the Past. I think yeah, Link that's to the my, I think that was Link to the past, past is my favorite. Also, but, Wind Waker was really good. Um, I also <laughs> go on. Swamp. We're gonna get rocks thrown at this house. Um, <laughs> the The idea though, we're like fine. I'm moving out. <laughs> Uh, the idea where you uh, start off in Hyrule Village, or like you 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 go to the future, you're in Hyrule Village, do all your things, and then the and then the Rainbow Bridge happens, right? The thing is, is that you have to complete a series of things in order to get that Rainbow Bridge so you can fight the final boss, yeah. right? Or I think that's how. Whatever. It, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, Anyways, whatever. same premise. So, though the idea the idea that it is an unimpossible barrier that you can reach by doing a series of tasks to to then sa- save the princess and, and thus save Hyrule. Okay, great. But the idea where like um, like Michalik here is saying, you go to you go to the place and more and more random stuff gets thrown. Like when I when I write something up, I think about practicality. Oh, there's going to be guards. There's going to be royal guards. There's going to be there might be a wizard. There might be traps. There is. Enchantments. There's enchantments. There is not, by any means, going to be th- going to be a uh, bubble direct around the around the entirety of the castle saying you as a specific person, <laughs> you are a big meanie and you're not allowed. <laughs> the king develops an invincibility bubble. No matter what you do, it doesn't work. He's a yes. psychic, and your you weapon know, turns. I to actually flowers. have a yeah. saying that's kind of applicable. I like to say, uh, "How do you how do you build a mountain? One rock at a time." Yeah, so you build a mountain that way. So it's not an impossible task building a mountain. It's just, it's just it takes a long ass time. Yeah, Nobody would want to do it. Do that, <laughs> There's so, that dude who sawed through the mountain. Well, also the king, the king, the king as, a, as a person, like a practical person, he's not going to not defend himself, mm-hmm. but he's not going to have the extreme measures that, like, have been brought up of this invisible mm-hmm. wall bubble, right? No, so, he's not going to be oh, unless like, it's like he's, war or something. Unless he's like a warlock super king, like. He's just going to be a dude, yeah. and any dude can get shot in the face by a crossbow. <laughs> well, and and the thing is, Sorry. actually, the way I, the way I look at it is that, and I think, Macalagar, you you uh, brought it up and touched on it, is that I think at the end of the day, we're talking about having consistent rules for a universe, and saying something's very, very, very difficult. Is fine because that's working within the rules of that universe. People can suspend their disbelief. There's verisimilitude, and they can enjoy themselves. As soon as you say something is impossible, you are directly throwing something in the face of the universe and the universe that we're all playing in. No matter what game system, is that it is a fantasy world, and in fantasy, the impossible can become reality. Okay. Well, seeing as how we're talking about this, and we're all like, I think we've just definitely established that we're all more or less in agreement. Mm-hmm. So let me let me throw some uh, some curveballs at you because uh, you know what? I'm just gonna believe that you're all wrong, and I'm the right one. And you know, University Bright, he's wrong too. Frick that guy. Oh man, Devil's Advocate. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> me and Mephistopheles, like this. Get your crucifix. Okay. So, as the GM, let's assume that there's an intense situation. That, that has been erected. The PCs went to a dungeon. The dungeon's coming to its climax. You know, you're about to fight the Beholder. Everything's about to go good. Everyone, Everyone's chomping at the bit. They're all on the edge of their seats. Intensity is rising. One guy says, guys, let's go back. I gotta go buy some more uh, healing potions. We need to go to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My question to you is, shall we put up some impossible barriers and keep that intensity up? Or, uh, I, I say, let's put up impossible barriers. Let's keep that intensity up, guys. Let's, uh, for the, stu- for the, for the, for the narrative, let's put up some impossible barriers. What say you? Now, what you, what you essentially mean is it's, you can only go forward and not back. Yeah. Why? In this case. Because 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 the because we want to keep we want to keep the flow of the game. Up. Okay, well, we want to keep the intensity up. I think that for the would sake be, of all the players, we want to do that. I think that would be a party democratic solution, or not democratic solution, but discussion amongst them. Like that's not a GM choice. Okay. All right. What if um, what if one of them has teleport? 
Use the teleport, then. It's That's easy solution. The spell and in the middle of this intense battle, uh, this intensity, the in increase in intensity, we we've created a feeling. Are, everyone's got this feeling. Are we in the, in the battle when he's like, I got no, no, this is like the dungeon's moving okay. and everyone's in okay. character, everyone's going. The and the wizard's like, I'd like to teleport to the potion shop and buy some more healing potions. And now you gotta stop the intensity, put it aside, start role playing. The shopkeep, hello there, would you like to purchase <laughs> some healing potions? And then the wizard's like, I would like to haggle with the uh, shopkeep for the healing potion. Like, oh, do you man. see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. totally dick. breaks the flow of the game. Come, like, everything is on the line. He, Hell, maybe even in the final battle, it'd be like, well, maybe the final battle's going on and the guy's like, I'd like to go, uh, <laughs> I want to go get a drink. And, and he like, <laughs> like, not even for healing potions, he's just supposed to have a seat, have a drink, he's like, GM... Mm. I'd like to have a drink. Hey, can I, can I teleport? Party continue. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Actually, I I agree with Evan on that sense because imagine this scenario: you have let's call him uh, Big Jimmy Shit Poster, the wizard proceeds to <laughs> teleport to uh, Agaron to go to the potion shop. Right. Meanwhile, Dagwood the Paladin and Barbarian the Barbarian are <laughs> Ian the Barbarian. Yeah, are fighting. Are fighting. Are fighting the Beholder. <laughs> And I would do a split where it's all like where Big Jimmy shit posters like, can I get that? Can I get that uh, that potion of cure light wounds? But I instead of paying fifty gold would like to play a meager twenty five. And then cut scene. Oh, yeah. Uh, cut scene to uh, screaming, uh, strife, violence, <laughs> beholder. Yeah. Multiple eye stalks, bad times, and then just the hilarity of that. The hilarity of then going back to Jimmy shit poster, where he's like, but I only have 25 gold. It was six <laughs> seconds, man. Yeah, and you sit, you sit there, and then like, like, just just that I, and that's the thing though too, is, is that like, yeah, combat's a thing, because how fast is the combat going in comparison uh, to the to the commerce? Okay, so. I think at that point you're using uh, the rest of the party against them as pressure rather okay. than. Okay, well, so this, we've solved this, this first straw man, but can we think yeah. of a situation where there might be like an intensity to the game or a heavy role play scenario where somebody wants to do something completely record scratchy and impossible barriers work or is this is this always going to be the case where it's like during a situation where impossible barriers are the easy solution uh, fucking suck it up excuse me suck it up and figure out the i got i got a good one his name is mike and he's decided he's going to play a ninja and is just going to keep going off on his own constantly sure yeah there you go okay yeah so oh, yeah. instead of like a, a, an intense once in a lifetime thing it's like no i'd like to go off and scout ahead and everyone's like Okay. Not even scouting ahead. So He's er, off like on his own mission. Half the yeah, half the session, well, whatever. Half the session has to be devoted to keeping Mike well, the ninja. Well, I'm, I'm. This is kind of familiar because didn't we talk about this on one of the other podcasts Probably. where they they segue it? Hey, dog. Nice yeah, they, yeah. This is all sort of blending by now. It's so. kind of going into player rules. Like that's clearly a bad player at that point. Yeah. It is. Stay but, with the damn party. But at the same time, though, it's it's a free roam, right? The thing is, is that if Mike the ninja wants to go around and do his thing. Okay, though in, I might internalize that with a little bit of crustiness. That's his. That is his or her right. And however, Mike the Ninja needs to understand that the setting has some bad stuff, and Mike the Ninja might run into some orcs, right. right? And Mike the Ninja might might survive that, but learn a lesson that you know what Mike the Ninja isn't as much as he thinks he is, and he might want to hang with the party, or. Have some type of thought. Okay, I understand. What if Mike the Ninja succeeds? Because we're not putting an impossible barrier. No, we're not. Mike the Ninja. But however, if Mark, if Mike, Mike, Mike the Ninja ends up with I don't know, say like a missing <laughs> limb or something, then he's well, all like, we all know someone like this. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But like, I think I've 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 had these games, like one of these games, where someone just wanted to do that because they got tired of the party, and I've I've been pretty excited about the majority of my groups because none of them have done that but you end up in those things where it's not really the dm creating an impossible like initially doesn't create an impossible barrier but then he's like okay well do i have to because i want to i want to corral mike back the thing is though is that sometimes solid sometimes um uh solidarity and loneliness and lack of playtime might be mike's punishment 
for going off and running off alone because the thing is, is that why are you giving one person limelight <laughs> over three others? So you don't have to make it an impossible barrier. You just stop paying attention to, to Mike the Ninja. Well, and You're just like, yeah, you go off on a fantastic... to you for five weeks. <laughs> you go off on a fantastic journey and do some things. Meanwhile, let's go and see what the players are doing. <laughs> <laughs> see that? I like to use it as a, a last resort because I feel like it, it does take away from the whole believability of the setting, but I think it is important to, to note that sometimes right. you can just take somebody aside and talk to them as a, as a as a player and say, listen, man, to be perfectly blunt, you're being a shitcake. Right. Well, well, sorry, to, uh, I just yeah, need, I need to finish this thought before I go. Well, yeah, the thing I is... Swear, what, right? Thing. I, well, I think well, I've said like four. So I, I've I've said Big Jimmy shit poster. So I've, <laughs> I was waiting for their first swear because I've been waiting to swear the entire series. I am pristine. I, I was pure up until today. <laughs> uh, the the problem is with with people like Mike the Ninja is that a lot of times there's no, the narrative, isn't either enticing enough for them to want to stay together or. Like for like in the game that say uh, Dagwood and Metallica are playing with me, there is a solid reason on why these people have to stick together. And if they wanted to f off and do their own thing, that's all well and good. But the thing is, as I said before in previous podcasts, the world still turns. Mm -hmm. The world still turns. The quest goes on. You know what? Um, Mon's goblin raiders are still going to come in and uh, go through the wall city gates and obliterate the entirety of you. So Mike the Ninja is one day going to have to deal with those things anyways. So, so and it's trying to corral a player. I think is just uh, it's bad form, and it, it makes it, it makes everyone salty because they worry about it happening to themselves even though they're playing the game. I think Fairly. it's because there's no way to disguise it. Everybody knows exactly what you're doing, and it's obvious. Okay, so I guess the next one would be um, uh, directing traffic. So like like why don't it's okay to use impossible barriers if we're, say, directing traffic. We got PCs, we want them at, at point, like, they're at point A, we want them to go to point B, you know, we'll put some barriers up so they don't end up in point C. All right, everybody wave goodbye to Swampy. He's leaving for now because he's got Make your real closing big comments. boy work. Uh, my closing comments are don't use a garlic press um, because it's wasteful. You tend to uh, not get the full amount of garlic. Um, if you're going to have uh, shrimp tails on shrimp, uh, make sure you don't put them in a salad uh, because someone did that and that's horrible. That's evil. That is evil. I and love like, shrimp tails. I eat those. Yeah, but like if you're if you're like <laughs> not in a salad. Not in a salad. <laughs> I wouldn't care. There's enough salad dressing. Like it's one thing if you tempura that shit and put it in a sushi roll. That's one thing. But uh, and the other thing though too is um, you know what? Lettuce is crunchy, shrimp peels are crunchy. I, I, I like lettuce, just but... Microwave your garlic for like 10 yeah, seconds that's what we're and shake do. it just gonna up. High-end cooking, we're going to use the microwave. Um, do, not <laughs> do not construct impossible walls. Understand that your players will try to jump them, and then you don't want to be that guy that ends up... Um, they hop the wall of the fence, and then they end up seeing... 100 crocodiles. 100 crocodiles, uh, a, a, ba <laughs> a, a Baylor car chimera with like three Baylor heads and like a beholder neck. I think they have that. It's called like a clue or cheer. Oh, Look geez. it up. And um, <laughs> I guess in terms of escalators to victory, the thing is that challenge to me, at least as a player, is almost everything because I like to earn what I keep. So There you go. See you later, Swampy. Bye, everybody. We, we Bye. will continue and elongate this discussion for some more time to come. <laughs> I think uh, if anybody's hearing this and they're starting to get some weird impression that we're like, you know, we're not taking it seriously or whatever. Well, it's true, we're not. But the <laughs> point the point is, though, I think, I think this is uh, probably a sign that we're more comfortable with the, with the casting and less a sign that we're like... You know, this is a chore, and we just don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, it is real no, fun. No, this is fun. Yeah. I don't know. So, to our seven subscribers, four of which are probably us, please, we're not going anywhere. Can you subscribe to yourself? I think so. That's I'm not, real I'm not a subscriber. dumb. I don't think I did it. I haven't done it. I should, though. Should. Upload something, get a, a, get a notification. Oh, just I, click I, unsubscribe I and subscribe so my metrics are all goofy. Yeah, man. The hateful <laughs> eight. That sounds fantastic, actually. Guys, look, it's John Stamos. I forgot my phone. Wow. Where's my phone? <laughs> By the way, you cannot subscribe to yourself because I unsubscribed to your other channel, so you'd have zero because I thought it would be funny. You I have, have two channels? Yeah, you have a Let's Play one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. With that, with that in mind, I'm plugging his Let's Play channel. Wow. 
Well, maybe I should actually play some Blitzes on there. There you go. Okay, so yeah, directing traffic. You have PCs in point A, you want to get them to point B for whatever reason. Like, let's say you wrote a cool, super cool villain for that session, and, and now these guys decided they want to go to point C, and you don't want to throw that all away. What do you do? Come on, impossible berries are easy. Oh, traffic's backed up on the highway. You can't get over it, there. It's easy if you oh, want to be a there's a DM. dragon in the east. He doesn't want anybody going <laughs> to the east. Ah, oh, um, there's literally a wall of spikes in the west. Mm. Better go north, boys. Going off what Swampy said, and like the world keeps turning. Hey, maybe Point C burned down while no one was looking. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the way I look at it is, I think that there's a, a little bit of social contract that uh, you know, if you lay out. Some social bites. contract we get all political science on here oh yeah, yeah. here we no, go No, just in the simple fact that if <laughs> you lay out let's turn this into a political stream and get demonetized <laughs> before you have the ability to do it oh my god should are we are we allowed to say political probably not oh, I, this is this video is demonetized Damn. all right but um the thing is is that if you you throw it a little foreshadowing people you know, you suspend your disbelief, you're going along with the story, you're like, hey, this is going to be fun, right? And you're relying a little bit on your players, uh, just as they're relying on you for that entertainment. I mean, the other option is, you could always just take that, if you have a story idea, you can always just take it and throw it into the future or something like that. You don't have to run it right now. If they want to go do something else, why? Like, why stop them? I mean, it's not the, the end of the world, unless it is the end of the world, in which case... I'm sorry. We're all uh, we're all distracted because I decided to show Ian a gift I got from Dog my parents. Stamp. It's a pig because I was born in the year You're of the, the boar. Pig, yeah. yeah, that's right. It's a stamp with my name on it. I was they born got it in from the year of the ram. That's really I think they cool. got it from Hong Kong. I think this one was Hong Kong. You got that nice silk box. Don't worry, guys. We're, oh yeah, we're gonna talk about China real soon. Let's talk about China. <laughs> China, where D and D is manufactured. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's true. <laughs> Wizards of the Shanghai Coast. Yep. Plug in my channel. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an amazing channel. Be a horrible be channel. Sure. Follow me on Twitter at Royals and Rogues. What's that, that cool movie? card game? Pirates or something. Pirates of the Barbary Coast or something. Pirates of the Caribbean. It's a Disney World ride. Shanghai. Uh, Shanghai cool Pirates card of game where Town. You'd pop these little pieces of a boat out of like these cards, and you'd make little boats and little dice. And that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it was great. You'd, you'd roll dice, blow people's ships, steal. Oh, treasure. that's that ridiculous game where During it's like it's like they were trying to make a collecting card game, but it was like with minis, and the minis yeah. were made of cardboard. Yeah, it was actually. I think that's fun. called Bakugan. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the one with the spinners? <laughs> no, that's. Uh, that's Beyblade? That's Beyblade. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That one doesn't have impossible. I don't know what the game. kids these days like. That was like that was the kids in the nineties. I don't understand <laughs> children these days. All they are, all they want is those Pokemans and their Tamagotchis. And their wrist slappers. Yeah man, just send me a picture of your favorite Pokemon. Just, just a piece of measuring tape. Fired. I'm just gonna send you a picture of Demi Devumon. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> or Lady Devumon. No. Oh, actually, yeah. Send me a picture of Lady Devumon. So, there next campaign, go. Digimon. Yeah, let's talk about Digimon versus Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. hard weebs. That's what we are. All right. Okay, so let's there was there was a contract. And the subject's been changed. <laughs> the contract we were talking about was um. Can you can you go into that again? There. Yeah. What was the so? What what's what is this gaming social contract? That uh, you're don't on be about? a dick and don't ruin it for everybody. Because remember, it's a good story, but at the end of the day, it's still a freaking game. <laughs> Truth it takes a you know it's don't flip the monopoly board right. Nobody came and played six hours for you to sit there and jerk off on them. Well, I mean you might pay extra for that. I mean that's I'm not gonna pay any money for that. It's you have free. to pay me for that. How much? I don't know. All right. <laughs> that's not this game. I'm getting with. hungry. We've already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this all is, right. This is almost as bad as top the notch. Episode. <laughs> this is a top notch stream. Yeah. I, I honestly, I think probably it's because the first six rules have covered a lot of ground, and the seventh yeah. rule is pretty. It's pretty much um, don't be a douche. It's pretty meta. Well, the first part at least is is very much. You know, it, it's kind of common don't sense. Don't be like a how, douche and don't be an. Enabler. I know people do do this because they're uncouth players or GMs, but... That's polite. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so, but I got a third one now. Okay. Okay? Okay. The setting has barriers, impossible barriers in the setting. Like what? That have been constructed before the setting started. Do they have good reasons? Well, setting specific reasons, mm. I'm sure. What kind of impossible barriers are you Let's say about? the Rotting Realms, okay? The Rotting Realms has a no extra planar travel barrier. You literally get torn into shreds, there's no way out, you're done. Okay. 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 Hard barrier. Um, let's see, what else would there be? Uh, Ravenloft in the Ravenloft setting in Dungeons and Dragons. You know, if a Dark Lord wants you not in or not 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 to come or not to leave, they can just put up an in invincible barrier between you and and them. Like, and obviously, I guess if the GM wanted plot hole ways out, they could do that. Mm -hmm. Like, they could create scenarios where it's possible to escape. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about literal barriers. And the and the Dark Lords actually have literal impulse. You're like no, I, or infinite zombies, or something ridiculous I will happen. You could never agree leave. with that one. If you have a setting specific thing, like for example, humans can't breathe underwater, and you've got to find some crazy way to accomplish that. But at the end of the day, you know it's either magic or whatever. But if you say literally, you cannot. There's no extra planar travel at all. That's the setting. That's just the way the universe yeah. works. No cowboys in my ninja that setting. Is, that's just the rules of the world. Like I played where I made a city once where the use of magic was prohibited casually. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, my players got arrested because somebody threw a magic missile in the middle of the market. <laughs> but perfect. Um, yeah, perfect. yeah. I mean, I'm there. The consequences are there. Mm -hmm. The barrier did, yeah, limit magic users. But I mean, that was that was the law. Yeah. And it wasn't because that's a I pretty won. soft barrier too in that example. Well, yeah, but you know what I mean. It's just, it's yeah. The premise is there. Okay, so so setting specific impossible barriers are I, okay I as that, long yeah. as when people yes. start the setting. But players should know what they are ahead of time. It should be something that's either whether it's common knowledge or it's something they discover. You know, I wouldn't just throw. By the way, you get totally eviscerated. Give me your sheet. Rip it up. You know, it's I don't not. Know. I mean, hey, that would be fun, but uh -oh. I, I think it'd be, it's fair that if you're going to say something is literally not doable. Mm -hmm. Does this go the other way, though? Setting specific escalators to victory. My uh, my example that comes to mind is your, your dungeon by the river, which you've just flooded, and that was it. You just went and collected the gold. Now that's just clever thinking right there. <laughs> that's not an escalator to victory. That was the, okay. you, you beat the dungeon by doing essentially nothing. Yeah, and that's because the, the the dungeon trope beside a river was really if that's stupid. That's not an escalator to victory. I don't even know what it is. I, that's genius. I, right I would I would probably define an escalator to victory. Okay, so we're in favor of those two. Using that's, using the setting as an escalator to victory. Well, yeah, well that's that's just a shortcut. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't call that an escalator. Escalators, you don't if you, you don't do be, anything. I, I, I have, if you need I have to, get to get think about the river, river. river. If the player comes down. up, if the player yeah. comes up with a really good idea <clears> that see, just circumvents a challenge altogether, by all I, means. I chose the word escalator very carefully because I didn't want like slippery slides like, or anything. Like I, the original rule said slippery slope, yeah. but it, like um, escalator is the idea is that you're you're rising or achieving greatness or whatever by doing nothing. by doing nothing literally nothing. yeah no no if the, and, and if in the, the case of the river it like candy i would say that that's that's more of a case of being like i had to think of the thing had to i solved the problem in a way that the gm was like oh and, and looks at the module that they wrote up and go oh, yeah. this is poop there, there are two cases in which i do think a little bit of um smooth transition to victory is fine one is occasionally after I, like, if I grind on my players for a while, you know, I throw a lot of hard challenges at them, you know, they barely make it through. Sometimes I like to throw some easy stuff. Oh, yeah, you come across a couple of orcs, right? Yeah, you're level 10. It's hilarious. But it shows them uh, how far they've come. It gives that nice scale back where people get perspective of their, their journey, right? And the other case is I'll use it as a trap as well. You know, if things are going too easy, it, it might just be a trap. Okay. So, setting specific barriers, those are okay. Yeah. We're okay with that. Yeah. All right. I got one. Shoot. Digging through dungeon walls. You're running a beautiful module, world's largest dungeon. Guy oh. brings a pickaxe. He says, you know what? I'm going to take the straight line. Module's like, no, there are anti-magic barriers in every wall and it's force walls between yeah, all of the bricks. Yeah, dungeon has dumb. What happens? Magic, dumb? magic barriers, I think, are dumb. If, depending on what your walls are made of, if they want to take the time and do that, I'd be okay with that. 
Well, if you've got steel reinforced walls, yep. hey, enchanted pickaxe, enchanted pickaxe, yep, to dig through steel, you're still going to be making right. noise. You're going to attract attention. You could I mean, cause a cave collapse. There's so many things that this could go wrong without ever having to actually throw up a no. You can't dig through the wall. You could say sure, that's but a, well, that's a good point. Actually, many modules have that I mean, written in their dungeons that you can't dig. Yeah, through the Wizard's wall. Wall. dungeon actually has that. No teleporting. You can't travel through the walls in yeah, any way. Yeah, it's 101 impossible barriers to try to force you into one of what, what is essentially one of the stupidest and easiest dungeons you could ever run. That's dumb. It has a back spoiler. It has a back door. It's about. It's a, a mile to the time. north, there's some giants by a volcano, yeah. or something stupid no, like that. I, it, 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 it's it's ridiculous. It's I'm in favor of digging through the walls. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that actually helps people believe that they're really in a world. They're playing characters. They're they're using things as if it were actually there, rather than just uh, yeah. a, numbers on paper, right? <laughs> and, and that's the whole point. The paper's supposed to be just simulating. Uh, your character, your character is actually supposed to be a creative endeavor. Okay. My only asterisk on this would be, if if one of my players decided to do that, I just might be like, oh, you think you're going straight and just slightly varying the dungeon? Because like, I can I can do that unless they have a map. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Even it's if like, they have a map, you're digging the into accurate. the earth. You're digging your own tomb. Oh, I rolled and it collapsed and you're buried. <laughs> We're all new character, friend. Look what you did to yourself. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. All right. So, so basically, then, yeah. So the dungeon walls trope uh, that you find in lots of modules because of lazy module writing. Uh, uh, people literally have to just ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist in order for the game to actually continue. And I think that's a little tragic. Give it a go if you do. Like yeah, you find could, a creative solution. Yeah, you could like actually the, all the noise that you make digging. You could actually incorporate that into the dungeon creation. Like, sure, you can dig through the walls, and in fact, there's crawl spaces, and they're full of fucking huge diseased rats. Yeah. Or there's a sinkhole in the middle of the wall, and you sink into an underground river. Or black and now mold. You're gone. Like, yeah, man. There's some things. Or hey, you find a secret room that isn't even connected to the rest of the dungeon. That could be cool. It doesn't have to be bad. You found a second dungeon. <laughs> exactly. Like how cool would that be? Let me pull out the tomb of horror. Or the, to <laughs> yeah, the tomb of horrors. You dug into another module. Hope you enjoyed and, mutilation. Uh, let's let's roll randomly for what room you found. And uh, you find there's treasure everywhere and a skull on an end table. This what do you do? <laughs> it's like I touched the skull. You're dead. Come on, man. Yeah, Skulls yeah, like, man. take my treasure. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've you been so clever and so cool, I would like you to have my treasure and become kings of this world. Just remember me fondly. Which brings us to probably and the second Betty part. The yeah. Do not construct escalators to victory. Yeah, don't do it, bro. The Demi-Lich of Kindness. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a good Lich one time. Oh yeah, there they exist. And uh, it was actually him versus... He became a lich to fight another lich. Was, and the like, party got involved. And he gave them a necklace of fireballs. And the campaign ended because they got all this loot. They left town. And while they're leaving, walking into the sunset, the player in the back was had this like necklace of fireballs. And he's like, I take off the biggest bead and throw it at the rest of the party. And they all roll fail. And they all died. And he takes all their loot and leaves. And we're like, well, that's that was the end of the campaign. And you know what? He was chaotic evil. So that makes perfect sense. Well done, everyone. You never put the chaotic evil guys in the back. <laughs> no. <laughs> he was a rogue. That's where group. your back is. <laughs> so yeah, okay. They, they um, now, the escalators to victory is a uh, is I think, in my opinion, probably the more pertinent part pretty, of the rule. Uh, it's it's a little bit more insidious, but what an escalator to victory is in my estimation, is it's more of a feel to a game, but what it is is it's and I, and I think the term used to be called a Monty Hall, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's essentially, it's like, oh, I've done something small. You get huge rewards. Oh, I've done something small. Big rewards. Oh, I've done something. Have an artifact. Bribery. I'd like to... Be, I'm a king now. Like, you know, I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other thing. I'm all sorts of stuff. And you never... Your character is never challenged, but he's constantly receiving rewards. Or uh, anything the character wants they get, or they're immune to death. Like I had a GM who was one of my better GMs, but when we figured out we were immune to death, 
I, I hate totally that. changed everything, in my opinion. So, uh, I guess the question would be, you know, escalators to victory. What do you guys think? Do you, do we do we hand out infinite loots? No, man. And why is it no good? King Midas. King Midas. The Midas touch. That is that is That's what good, I'm going yeah. with. <laughs> That's good analogy, yeah. Mm. Um. I think that it's 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 not just that it ruins a little bit of the feel because again, as uh, pointed out there earlier, um, it really, really, really has to do with that challenge as well. It, when people realize that they have plot armor, or uh, they they realize that it doesn't matter what they're gonna do, that the DM's not gonna throw failure in their face. I find that it, when I play games like that, I lose a lot of interest because. I too like to be challenged. Uh, you like to feel like you earn it, and not only that, but like from a from a mechanical perspective, it doesn't matter what system you're playing. Loot e equals power, right? And so, if you're giving people more and more loot, you're also taking their power up and away from maybe other players, maybe from what is uh, you know actually reasonable for them and it can really end up crashing your whole game so you wind up with people who are bored and overpowered and yeah no shit they're gonna break through your walls and blow up the king and do all sorts of stupid stuff yeah. I mean, well it also speaks to like if you, if you have bored characters who are overpowered and like they have done nothing to gain this power and then you throw an actual challenge at them oh, they're not gonna fit. know what to do they're just gonna shit fit all over the place and be like well, what was the point of me getting 10 million items and then dying? Yeah. yeah. So uh, my, my perspective is is basically um, it it's kind of like um it's kind of like a disease giving out free treasure. Mm -hmm. Like the it, you can use it as a narrative tool, right? Like especially in a game where you want the players like a late a game that starts late. Like say like level like fifteen or something, and you want the players to achieve level fifteen status very quickly, and you're just like, oh yeah, stuff happens. You now you guys are rich and powerful. You got lots of artifacts. You're great to go. Everything's great. You know you got all this cool shit, and now the game begins. You know now that you've you feel that you've you've got all this free stuff through minimal effort, but it, it always feels good at first. It's like crack actually would it be is. a better thing. You know, you, a GM gives out really big rewards for small think... actions. People are like, yeah, I'm into this. This game's real great. And if you keep handing out more rewards, the rewards either have to get bigger or your game's they, just going to... build people, up a people tolerance. Are just, yeah, they build up a tolerance to it. They, they don't they don't find it interesting anymore or whatever. You know, like, oh, another, you know, Vorpal Longsword. Throw it on the pile, you know. You end up with all, you end up with this, like, the, a fatigue for, for excellence or, or for, for reward. Yeah. I, I and the game will fall apart because I, people will just lose interest, like like you guys were exactly, saying. But I, I if you use it as a narrative device, just to finish my, my thought before I went on a tangent, if you use it as a narrative device to produce the challenges equivalent to a level 15 party with, without... Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, without, um, without having to go through an entire campaign of 15 levels, like you just wanted to get to the point where you guys are at the 15th level, you have the infrastructure, and it's like a quick... A quick haul so that you can be at that 15th level and boom now we're good to go it's you know it's time to play game of thrones or whatever the heck we're playing you're all various people with all sorts of cool shit Dude. oh man i should put that in the background uh, i love that i song. think that's a copyright issue. Uh, well i think most of the songs i put on here are secretly a well, copyright talk issue. About being demonetized. but but we like cover it with audio and it's yeah, not we like just, we're using their videos we so. talk louder than the music yeah except no nah, it's, it's pretty high but uh, yeah, I don't know what's going uh, on in the music but right I, now. I think you, I think you actually touched on something there. I hope that's not totally blocking out <laughs> what we're saying, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I think these, it's, it's okay. Um, you actually touched on something that I think kind of must be the like the root of why DMs do this because the question isn't just like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, people do it, don't do it, but like sometimes why do people do it? And I think in a way it's people are bribing their players trying to keep their interest. Maybe because they, they don't feel like, you know, they're bringing enough otherwise or if people, uh, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. That, and that's, I think that's the thing is like if you don't have a plan for all this, this, this free shit that you're giving people um, and you're just constantly giving free stuff because you know that players are 
being positive towards the, the free stuff you give them. You know, you give them t lands and titles and treasures and artifacts, and they're all really excited about their well, characters and all the cool stuff that they can do. And yeah, and anything they do, they succeed or whatever. Eventually, they're just <laughs> going to be like, I conquer the world, and you're just, and, and you're going to get to the point where you're like, whoa, they're what? It's like, yeah, I, I, I do I do the thing you don't want me to do. You did give me a sword and then, of infinite And that's wishes. when the impossible barriers start getting erected. <laughs> no, you can't. It's like, yeah, but I have the disruption wad of endless disintegrations. Like, I, I can do, I can stop that impossible barrier. And then you're like, no, a hundred dragons show up to fight a war against you. It's like, I what? The Where did these come dragon from? Vanishing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you gave me the scroll <laughs> of dragon vanishing. <laughs> no! <laughs> There's a, the dragons turned to, to mummies now, and... Yeah, it, yeah it, I, it, just, it, I, think, I think that's way. exactly it how they're linked. Scenario. That's how they're linked with a little feedback. Is it? Uh, I think it actually starts the other way around, where people wind up making things too easy for their players, and then they start throwing these walls up because they don't know how to make something challenging without being yes or no. Either that, or they're afraid of yeah. disappointing people or something like that. So maybe the rule should probably be written, rewritten something to the, to the effect of do not create escalators to victories. Panic will ensue, and you will be forced to create impossible walls. Yeah, something along. Do not lines. create impossible walls. Because impossible <laughs> walls bad for the player. Impossible or escalators to victory bad for the bad story. For the GM. <laughs> Everything's bad. All bad. Everything is awful. DD sucks, no one ever played again. <laughs> yep, there you go. And that's pretty much what the theme is of all seven of these rules, is that Dungeons and Dragons is a bad game and everyone should play cast. <laughs> Shameless plug. Do we get a coupon? Shameless plug! Do we get a coupon? For what? A free game? Yes. Yes. No. I want you to pay me to play the game. Oh my god, I basically do. I want to play the game. <laughs> the, if no labor one... hours into that game that no one plays is, is a sign... <laughs> Of payment? I get invited to all this shit, and no one invites me to actually play the damn game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, You know, it's... I find, like, just to go completely off topic in terms of, like, the game, the cast, um, I find that most people play Swampy's games because he just has a more robust group of people he knows, I guess. And mm -hmm. he's more willing to grab people at younger ages than him. Uh, and they all play D&D. That was so horribly phrased. Yeah. Grab people at younger ages than hey, hey. Swampy is a sexual <laughs> deviant. Anyway. Swamp yeah, Swampy really is just a sexual deviant. <laughs> and and it's kind of sad. And if he's he not, listen, he's a nice man. If, he listen, if he's listening to this, I'm sure he'll come on and rebuke this. He's not well, he listen. did actually say at the beginning that he wasn't. So he's either a sexual deviant or he's a liar. There you go. Which is Got it, Swampy? <laughs> Which is Answer it? us or don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, in all seriousness, no. He, 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 I, I have a play group that's pretty devoted to, to the the system which is pretty cool but the problem is is they're all grown men and women and they all have lives and it's hard to assemble assemble them together and especially difficult when swampy's always running a game on the days i want to assemble it together. and that shit gets well, hard D &D is pretty accessible yeah. everyone knows like so instead we just we just do a two-hour podcast yeah. talking about all those cool dnd games we could have when we have more free time Man. This is what getting old looks like. I, I could yeah. do so much hey, prep back in the day. For our young listeners. You remember when stuff. you actually used to come up with names for your NPCs instead of saying, uh, This is Bob, Bob Jagged Tavern Keeper. <laughs> Guardy McGuardington. This is my generic old man voice. I use it for every <laughs> old man. Because the last time I gave one a unique voice, you thought he was a wizard and killed him. <laughs> Oh, you add a little bit of a lady time to it, and it's every old lady in the town. <laughs> so why is everyone old? You ever notice there's never, like, any fresh-faced young bevy of wenches running around? And everybody, you always eat these old people. I, I think it's because then you get characters like Swampy the Sexual Deviant who turn around and go, Well, I maxed out my charisma. <laughs> and then you gotta fade to black. You gotta fade to black. It's true. That's a fade rule. To black. Fade to black. <laughs> we talked in depth about it. Yeah, fading to black was very important. Well, okay. Uh, this sort of fell apart, but yep. um, <laughs> I think I think we basically covered the ground. Like the the escalators seem to lead to the panic scenarios. I think that's probably the great nugget of wisdom to come out of this. And so, because you can take the escalators over the walls. 
Yeah, that's right. Oh, I like that. That's sneaky. Yeah. That's I like that. That's good. That's a good slogan. So, but yeah, that, that's probably what what really comes out of this is like the one of the dar the 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 results of escalators to victory is you will be confronted with a scenario where you will want to put up impossible barriers. Learn to develop. Don't truly. put up impossible barriers because your game takes a yeah. dump then. And is, if you just keep giving them escalators, like, nobody wants to ride an escalator forever. No. They have to get to a destination, and if there's no destination, they'll lose interest and jump off the escalator and see if they'll live. And wreck they off uh, the rest of your shit, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's... The do would be learn how to create truly appropriate challenging encounters. So I guess uh, that that concludes all seven rules for successful GMs. Um, you know... Uh, Pretty much, let's go with closing statements, you know, um, about this one, and then maybe maybe we'll just touch briefly on all seven rules as a whole and see what everybody has to say. Like, I'm not going to go through them individually, but no. uh, just like as a whole, if anybody we, has anything that they really got dislike, go through individually. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that would actually, a little bit. That would be a good episode minutes. eight, actually. Just uh, I was thinking of a recap. Yeah, a yeah. recap episode might be fun. Kind of like yeah. a refresher <laughs> and look at. Like it. not like a, a recap, but. Actually, the thing I was thinking is to just leave it as it stands. But if any viewers want to message me, uh, invite pretty, them on the show. Well, yeah, there there we'll are talk to them. Yeah, there there are um, Skype or, or Google Hangouts and things like that. There's ways to do there this. There is an so extra if two people, seats. If people want to get a hold of me through the comments section and be like, "Your rules are stupid," uh, and brook much tampering, you then, called me a bad TM <laughs> like eight you know times. <laughs> In one episode, <laughs> rule one, rule one has lost me friends. Like I, I will tell you that right now. Like people, I have getting into fights over plot doesn't matter. <laughs> they will, they take, they go nuts. Play like G, GMs, they are so full of themselves half the time. They go insane. They go crazy. They just <gasps> my plots are amazing. My PCs love my plots. It's like no, no they like they feeling don't. special. Yeah, they don't like your stupid plots, and then and, and you get your it just it just totally turns out that they're not very good at the game, or they don't even understand the game well, that they're hey, playing. Hey, I, I like my plots, but I'm willing to drop them if. Uh, well, that's and that's the thing. It's, it's, no hard feelings. It, after, it's usually people who are really full of themselves. After all these damn podcasts, I'm just I, I pretty much just built a world, and I'm like here, do whatever you want. Right. I'm I'm dead on the inside yeah. now. I used to be creative. All my now NPCs are named Bryant. <laughs> they all just stab you, and they just stab you and stab you and stab you again and again. Don't go to stab town. Do you have dreams? <laughs> they stab those too. Like, oh, you're a construct and you don't sleep. He huh. stabs your eyes out. Heard a good joke yesterday, actually. Why did Freddy Krueger uh, go after teenagers? You can't go after 30-year-olds. Their dreams are already dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hurts on the inside. It's too uh, Laughing to cover uh, real pain. <laughs> actually, uh, as an addendum, too. Uh, addendum. I'll, we'll talk to that mm. in a bit. I guess the closing comments are, yeah, escalators and barriers. Don't do it. I don't think we need to go into closing comments. Everyone sort of had the same discussion. And yeah. it's a pretty straightforward rule. There's like I think we milked it of all of its... Green Star Wars milk that we can get. Killed it dead. But, uh, um, Shooty. Shoots, whatever Shoots he's calling here. himself right now. No, he's not here. But he, um, when I, when I showed him the rules for GMing back in the, like, before we finished rule two, uh, he wanted to add an addendum. And we'll just have a quick discussion about mm. it now, if you want. Sure. He wanted to add, as a rule eight, uh, the true death of a character is when they are no longer cool. Ooh. And, and this is sort of like th this is actually kind of an overall theme too to to most of the rules of GMing, especially like your like rule one your story doesn't matter is really a lot about making sure keeping the and, and also the um, your, your characters are not cooler than the PCs characters, you know, the way to kill a player like not the character but the player of their interest in the game is to basically make their character suck. Make them not cool, and that oh, that's you know, one. the the rape and things like that. That's a one way to do that. You know, making your characters outshine them. That's another way to do that. Putting impossible barriers so they can never succeed. That's another way to do that. Like making everything too easy for them. all of these rules actually point to that. Yeah, it's a good uh, summation of the entire series, that, pretty much. Yeah, yeah dude, actually, you know what? That's probably it, really so good. Yeah. Keep your ego out of it so that you don't make your players feel like they yeah, suck. I mean, all yeah. in all, the game is. 99% the player, 1% GM, so, like... Yeah, yeah. It's, 
It's, hype your players. Don't hype your NPCs. Uh, hype their actions, not the actions of Gorgoth the Barbarian or whoever we're talking. Whoever, about. yeah, you're cool. You're Pro- a cool NPC that yeah. you just need to glorify play the their characters is. glorify their ideas and actions, not just their dice yeah. rolls. You're playing heroes. You're not playing average Joes. Yeah, I've I've always um I've always Even remembered their failures the failures should be awesome. Yeah, I've always re- I uh, cast gives you a character point for failing. It is called epic there. fails for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've always run under the auspices that in a level system like D&D, like one to, one to five is your potato farmers, basically, yeah. who is, who's trying to achieve greatness. So your challenges should be reflective of being basically nobodies. Five to ten is you are seasoned veterans of no longer potato farming. <laughs> you know what? And, and that is where you start getting into the, I would say, the larger scale things like like delving into ancient secrets and all this other stuff and like you know you start giving the finger to the man like like to the town guards and stuff and usually by 10th level between 10 and 15 this is when you stride above kingdoms like you walk between the you're, borders of kingdoms and you're an authority when, in your own right yeah you you are an authority you're probably a king or you, you're some messiah figure or or someone who's just like no this is lord cromwell of Kick ass Don't mess with him. I've you know, seen him kill ten yeah. orcs. In one. You are the wizard in the tower. Nobody talks to you except to ask you for things. Yeah. You know. And then once you've reached fifteen to twenty, that's where you're just like, you know, Let's kingdoms. Kingdoms are nothing. I deal with gods now, and the yeah. gods tell me to stop, and I tell them no. And then, and you know, gods are you know depending on your setting, obviously, I guess. And then once you get past twentieth level, this you are a god. You basically are. You've achieved essentially. The only step left is achieving the official divinity, because mm. you're, you know, you're you're Gandalf. You're getting invited to the billionaires' club. Yeah, you know, you've either fallen and your character is no longer a hero, and you should be written as an NPC villain or someone who just doesn't do anything, yeah. or you've basically ascended and you're you people write about you and make shit up about you that's even more awesome well, than hey you can continue done, which was pretty awesome point, but you're eventually dealing with higher and higher stakes right yeah but the point is is you rise above like you're 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 rising above the sort of mediocrities that, mm-hmm. like, like initial, it's like potato farmer day to day townsfolk mediocrity. Then it's Ooh, like the mediocrity of like local authority and things like that. Like you know, the Dukes of Hazard are people who are like level eight or nine, right? right? Like because they they don't they just ignore Boss Hog. But <laughs> you know, once you hit level ten to fifteen, you're you're basically ignoring the Feds too, and then. Once you hit twenty, you know Jesus they, shows up. He's like, "Yo, bro, they you do should that really." When you go to Atlanta, though. They ignore the fence. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Well, I guess they're higher level than. Dukes <laughs> <laughs> of Hazard. It's uh, the General Lee, man. It's one of the them's got mount. proficiency oh my God. with uh, <laughs> land vehicles. General Lee is a magic item. <laughs> <laughs> All hail the Confederacy! Oh man, don't do it. Dukes of Hazard is very racist. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Battle cry. Perfect. Oh, good job, Shooty. Good job. You. But yeah, actually, you know that's pretty good. Thank. Well, thank you to Shoots then for for somehow wrapping this all seven rules of GMing into a nice beautiful bow. Cool You're, the true death of a character is when they are no longer cool, and the easiest way to kill a cool character is to let your ego as a GM try to triumph it, yep. or try try to overshadow it. So I guess uh, next week, then, we'll be starting on the rules of playership. And this is another seven rules that were written. Uh, This is more, obviously, directed towards players. So the the first seven rules for GMs was, uh, you are a GM, and then the rule. This one's is, you are a player, and then the rule. So the next one is, um, you are a player. Uh, In character is where game grievances live. You are not your character. And that's uh, that's uh, the topic of next week. So hopefully, uh, and we apologize for skipping a week for those avid that one avid listener who listens every week. Um, the one who met you at the store. Hi, Mike the Ninja. Well, whoever that guy was who met me at the store, that guy was great, and he was just like, "Yeah, I don't agree with you on everything." I'm like, "Well, if you don't agree with me, you should probably come on the show and tell me what you don't agree with, and yeah. we should we should open the ring up for the blood sports." Might as well, man. Internet turn turn this into internet blood sports. We'll get freaking Tonka saw on here and the Hunger Games. Yeah, man. Fantastic. It'll be beautiful. Okay. Um yeah. Well then, I guess 
that should close that off. Unless anybody has any closing comments, or are you are you excited for the rules of playership? Uh, I am. I actually hope I can more excited. More excited than I was for the rules of. Oh, why is that? Because uh, I like player rules. Okay, that's fair. that's cool. I like to brook much tampering. I would Excellent. say that uh, if there is one thing, being a good player is about four times as important as being a good GM. True. That would make perfect sense. Uh, and with that said, then uh, I hope you all look forward to next week. Party at 10 subs. I might actually start making things a little bit more visually stimulating. I might get into uh, video editing. Ooh, Ooh. Can we do like a, we'll like have a, some animated stuff white. going on, We maybe? could put a webcam and then they can see who we are. No! no. <laughs> and by no, I mean, no, that'd be fine. I don't care. I'm gorgeous. I just, I just don't want the, yeah, the mob. He's so majestic. It's like looking I at am you wearing a nice ass. shirt today. It's true. It's true. A little turd sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, let's uh, let's end this cringe fest. All right. Well, thank so, you for having us. No problem. I I'm hope not, to see I'm you guys next week. Yeah, you you're gonna be here next week. I don't yeah, give a shit. So everybody who's listening, I hope you all take care. Have yourselves a great night. And thank you for listening to the Delirium.